Welcome to the Rock the Stage Show. Each week, international media expert Rich Bontrager has in-depth and personal conversations with celebrities, top leaders, authors, speakers, and media professionals. Now, from the Rock the Stage studios, here's your host, the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back. Rock the stage on Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We have another great show lined up for you tonight. And believe me, we're going to get into an area where I've studied it. I know about it. I've done it, but I stink in it. We're going to get an area of public speaking, which I don't stink at. Okay, let's just qualify that one. But sales and sales and sales. I have tried to be a good salesman for so many years, and I've had to let that go and let other people do it. But I do not like sales. I am not good at sales, but today we have a global expert salesman, keynote speaker. He's done a lot of great stuff, and we're going to get into the world. And if that's not enough, he suffered a stroke. He survived, and part of his public speaking is, and it mingles in with his sales, talks about persistence and success, not giving up. We're going to get into a great conversation here tonight, so don't go anywhere. And in fact, Roderick Jefferson is a senior executive with 20 years of sales, enablement leadership experience, he is also an acknowledged practitioner and keynote speaker in the sales enablement space. Now he understands how to create bridges between the internal organizations to empower sales to exceed expectations. Do you hear the last part of that? To exceed expectations. I didn't have any expectation. I'll just be honest. I tried, it didn't work out. Roderick, come on in and save me here. Here's Roderick. <laughs> Rich, welcome, man. Thank you so much. And I've been looking forward to this conversation. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, you are an expert in this area, area of sales. I'm really excited to get into this because usually we don't talk about our shortcomings, but tonight I'm going to be really transparent. You're going to help me out here tonight. But first of all, I found researching you that – you're a salesman and you're proud of it. Not a lot of people say, I'm a salesman and I love it, <laughs> but you do. Why is that? It's funny. I think that sales is actually one of the, the best professions on the planet when it's done right and when it's not as horrible. And I also think that salespeople are, are like quarterbacks. They're made. They're not. They're not. They're born. They're not made. Right. Oh. And so it, it, and it was one of those things where. I had gone to school, I had played ball, I got injured, had to get a real big boy job. And the the woman that I was um, connected with at the time, her family was tied into AT&T and they said, we can get you in right now as a sales guy. And I was like, "Uh uh-oh, I I don't really sail, (laughs) right? That's not my thing. (laughs) I just like talking to people. And then I, I realized that's really what it is. It's not about giving presentations. It's about having conversations when you do it right. Well, and I think that's the difference right there. Because it feels slimy when it is forced. The used Carl Smellman type of feel to it. And you don't like it. It gets icky really fast when you're selling versus just having a conversation, right? Absolutely. And, and, and you just hit it on the head. Most people, when they think sales, they think about used cars. I can get you into this car today if you fill in the blank. That's not selling at all. That that literally is about trying to put money in their pocket. Sales should never be about me getting more money, me closing deals, me ringing the bell, me, 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 me. And that's the big problem. Stop talking about you. That's not why people are here. When I think about sales, I think stop selling and start helping. So another thing you talk about is, which I totally agree with in keynote speaking and a lot of things, is experience. Create an experience as you're selling. Take them on a journey, right? Indeed. Because people are going to remember you from the first moment they meet you. And it's either going to be a positive or a negative experience. And it's going to be hard to change that from that initial spot. So what I say is, I I take the European approach, and that is it's about relationships. It's about connecting, not about connections, right? It's how can I find out more about you and what's going on? And in sales, for the longest, it's how do we find pain? How do we manifest pain? How do we highlight pain? 
What if it's not about pain? Sometimes it's about a need for increasing productivity and efficiency. So you ask questions. The more questions you ask, the more answers you'll get. People will tell you what's going on, what's broken, and, and where the problems are if you just listen more than you talk. So you also have this philosophy of let's let's turn the table now into some of your keynote speaking because they do blend together. Your keynote speaking, leadership, it all merges together. You have this side thing in that hope is not a strategy, <laughs> which again, I am one of the most hopeful, positive, biggest dreamers in the world. And I heard that from you and I went, wait a second. Hope is a powerful force, but you're saying it's not the strategy to hold on to? No, what I'm actually saying is hope alone is not a strategy. Listen, a lot of people, let's go way back. We hope we get into the right college or university. We hope we get good professors. We hope that we get into the classes that we need to. We hope we graduate on time. We <laughs> hope we get into a great company. We hope we get a great leader. At what point do you take responsibility for driving your own fortune? And that's the piece I'm saying. It's great to have hope. Don't get me wrong. I'm probably one of the most hopeful people you know. But at the same time, if it's just hope and I don't put any wood behind the arrow, yeah. it's useless. Well, hope in sales, also, I've worked with people that have said, just put on the smile and you're going to hopefully make a sale today. I know you're going to make a sale, but <laughs> no, you're not going to win it. You're not no, going to win it. Right? You know what happens when you put on, on, on the smile and hope? It, it's the old adage, and you were a sales guy at one point. You get it. It's rabbit ears. It's you only hear the wonderful things that are going to help you close this deal, right? Oh, they said this. I hope they meant that we're going to move forward. I, I hope that they choose me over my competitor. I hope that the pricing is right. I hope that they sign before the end of the month. And no one cares about that. At the end of the day, it it's two things that come to mind right away. One is if I'm helping you and I'm being authentic and I care about you as a person, you're going to feel it. If you're just a logo, you're going to feel it. And the second piece is my least favorite word in sales, discount. <laughs> discounts. <laughs> Look, discounts are only used in the, uh, without any value, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't have value, then you know what? I'll strip it down. I'll discount it. If you can show value on how I can help you increase productivity and efficiency or decrease pain, then I help you. But there's one other piece to this. Most salespeople find out everything under the sun about the company. I look at their 10K, their 10Q. I go listen to their annual reports. Ah, oh, but that's only 50%. Here's the part that changed the game for you. Okay. Ask the prospect one simple question. So Mr. And Mrs. Prospect, by only doing business with me and my company, what can I do to help you? Get you out of the doghouse, get your name in lights, get you a promotion. Because now you've got their attention. So it is finding the pain point, but it's doing it in a way that they give you the pain point. They, they mm, not let, Let's step away from pain. It's okay. not about finding a pain point. It's about finding the trigger point for them. Is it that they're in a place where they're up for a promotion? Is it they've been in the doghouse and I need to get out of it? Is it I just want to see my name in lights because I see everybody else's, right? Or is it I need to go and show my value to our executive leadership team or if you're an executive to show it to the board? Find what is of high value to them and dig in it with 75 shovels. <laughs> okay. Now, let me blend your two worlds of public speaking mm -hmm. and sales here because I coach presentation on the stage. And one of the biggest things I get the question is, I need to be a better salesman from the stage. Those are the exact words. <laughs> and I tell them, you don't sell from the stage. Now, you may tee something up. You may mention that you have a new book coming out. You may say, you know, I have some services that you're going to learn about later on, but you don't sell but there are speakers out there that are selling from the stage. What can we do about that? Because it feels you're getting motivation, you're getting business tips, you're getting all this stuff, and all of a sudden, bang, they do a commercial in the middle of their keynote. Oh, I hate that. 
I, I will say uh, this though. I, I'm going to say the opposite of what you just said. I do think you should sell from the stage. Really? Yes. But here's what you sell. You sell the experience of you and your essence. You sell your experience of having solved the kind of problems that they have. You sell the experience of working with a caring, authentic, real uh, human. And then you draw them in with that piece and you never change from being that person. A lot of folks I've seen up on the stage, they kill it. And you're like, oh, that's the kind of person I want to work with. And then once the contract signed, you're like, whoa, what happened to the person that was yes. and authentic and real? Now, all of a sudden, it's, hey, my manager says that if you sail today, <laughs> all right, all Even that. Even the voice changes. Even the voice right. is different. <laughs> exactly. And, and so stay with that. And, and the thing I say is, and I think the reason is we feel like when we some people step on the stage, they have to put this corporate mask on or on this keynotes mask on. Yes. I'm the same person on the stage that I am when I walk on it as I walk off of it. You're going to get me eight days a week, 400 hours a day, right? I'm the same person. And people smell that. Yeah. When you're fake, they know. When you're authentic, they know. When you're real. The other piece is if you're going to sell something, sell this. Sell that I am here for one reason and one reason only to enhance your journey. I may not make things easier, but I can make it a little better for you. So is that part of this GTM transformation that we're talking about? Is this all Absolutely. interconnected with that? It's, it's, it's that go-to-market transformation. It is looking at the buyer's journey versus how you sell to them. Most sellers think about their sales stages, their sales process, their sales methodology. Let's call it their selling motions. Yeah, mm -mm. let's flip that on its ear. GTM transformation is about looking at the buyer's journey. Who buys? How do they buy? Do they have buying seasons? Do they have buying committees? Getting to learn about you, everything about them. And don't talk about products and services and platforms. Nobody cares what you call it. Please <laughs> stop that. Never once, if I'm talking to someone, well, you, I ever talk about a product or a name, right? And, and here it goes back to that European piece. Yeah. The sales process in Europe is about relationships. It's about connecting with people. Here, when we meet someone, what's the first thing we do? We extend our hand and we say, hi, I'm so-and-so. I work for so-and-so and my title is so-and-so. Here's yes. a quick story for you. When my son was small, my wife was a stay-at-home mom and she took him out to the park one day, right? And she played with this kid for about an hour, hour and a half. As they're leaving, my wife says, okay, Nate, go and say goodbye to your friend. And okay, what's your friend's name? And here's what he said. He said, blue shirt. Because that's what he was wearing. Do you think they ever stopped and said, hi, my name is Nate and I want to play in your dirt because I am a second time dirt player. No. He said his name was blue shirt because that's what he was wearing. That's all that mattered. I want to play in the dirt. You want to play in the dirt. Let's go play in the dirt together. And yes. And if you play in the same dirt, let's naturally play more. Let's play more. Yeah. You've got friends that like to play in dirt. So do I. Let's bring my friends too. You bring yours. I'm and then all of us have more friends and we share more toys. And that's literally what's selling it. Bringing right more now, friends. You know. We call it ecosystem, right? <laughs> bring your friends to play in the same dirt and bring their toys too. That's about all it is. Well, that's where the networking comes in. That's where the relationships come in. Right. And your stronger network is a stronger friendship. That's how that really all, I mean, it just takes off. Your network is determined, your network will be determined by your network. Yeah. We all know that, right? Yep. It's not about who you know, it's who you know that will speak on your behalf. Exactly. Now, as a public speaker, I've heard you had a stroke. Now, did that happen on stage while giving no, a keynote? No, it actually happened the night before I was supposed to get on stage. Wow. I was, I was in L.A. and preparing to hit the stage the next day. You know, you go and you walk, you do your 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 preset, and, and you check out the room, the audience, yeah. and all of that. Or excuse me, the auditorium and all that. Well, 
I fell asleep like every other night. And this was October 27th, 2021, almost three years ago. And I woke up the next morning and I felt really tired. I mean, more so than I had ever felt. Now, thankfully, my wife is a stay-at-home mom, as I said earlier. Every morning we jump on the phone, we share calendars. What are you doing? Now, what I heard sounds like what you're hearing right now. What she heard was just gobbledygook. And she said, uh-oh. Now, thankfully, a friend of hers yeah. some months previous had had a TIA at small stroke. So mm-hmm. she knew how to walk through the protocol. And right. she said, hey, say, count to 10. Oh, that's easy. 1, 2, 7, 26, 54. Say your ABCs, A, B, L, Q, W, Z. And she said, whoa, 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 whoa. I need you to go in the bathroom. Look at yourself. Is your face drooping? No. And she said, one more thing. What's your middle name? Uh, uh, I don't know. She said, call 911. You're having a stroke. Now, it wasn't just a stroke, though, Rich. Yeah. I had a stroke while I was asleep. It had sleep strokes on average have a 98% fatality. I am part of the 2% club. Wow. I actually woke up from, oh, no, that's that's the good part. <laughs> the bad part is it landed in the center of my speech center. As a speaker. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now I can't talk. They, I flew back home. They yeah. take me to the, to the hospital. And what I found out is it was because of congestive heart failure that I wasn't even aware that I had. So, and there was no blockages, but the average heart squeezes on about 55 to 65% on average. When yeah. it gets to 20% of function, it stops cardiac arrest, you die. When I got rolled into the ER, in the, uh, excuse me, into the ER, I was at 20% heart function. I knew I was going to like talking to you. <laughs> um, for those that watch the show, you've heard bits and pieces, but I went through liver failure very much like you did mm-hmm. with your stroke. No visible early warning signs, nothing going on. Keynote speaker. And I wind up thinking I had the flu in the hospital and they rush me in and say, you're the biggest dead man in the hospital. And you never should have woken up. So I understand that. So let me ask this question. How did that impact your speaking? Because for me, it changed my world. It changed everything. Oh, uh, let me finish this story for you, though. So I'm lying in the bed and I hear code blue. Lights are flashing and it's my room. Suddenly I hear beep and I'm flatlined. I died. I float up to the corner of the room. I'm looking down at my body. They're sucking out fluids. They're doing chest compression. And and I look to my left, and it's my mom. My mom passed in 99. And I said, okay, mama, I guess it's time. I'm ready to go. I've done everything I can. And I remember her words. And she said, no, baby. I was sent here to tell you they're going to figure this out, and you're going to be just fine. Now I'm sucked back into my body, but I'm still flatlined. And I hear the one word that nobody ever wants to hear, clear. I was like, oh, this is not going to be good. (laughs) So I'm flatlined. And now suddenly I hear beep and it's beep, beep, beep. I reach out as they're bringing the paddles down to shock me. And I grab the arm and it stops right there. Now, let me ask you a question. How did it change my, me there? Yeah. Um, It changed everything. My approach, my relationships, um, my approach to life, my keynotes, everything. I now have a, a philosophy of my four Fs, friends, family, faith, fun. That's it. Everything else is on the outside of that. I look at life differently. I just got my first grandbaby four months ago. I now understand why I was supposed to be left here. And also I was talking about, to your point, sales enablement before. Now, the predominant amount of conversations is around a talk track that I call the 2% club, the 2% mentality. Yeah. It's about overcoming life's obstacles. I think I know a little something about that. I went yeah. snow blind. I lost my left arm, my left leg. I couldn't talk as a keynote speaker. Mm-hmm. Right. So as you're laying there, you have a lot of conversations, whether you believe in God, a higher power, whoever. You have a conversation with someone that says, please help me. And I prayed the same thing every night. Rich, one thing, you know what it was? 
please let me wake up tomorrow. Yeah. That's all. That's all. Just let me wake up tomorrow. And now I'm here. My job, my goal, my purpose is about helping other people. Because I got there because I was an executive and I got comfortable with living at that red line of stress. And it became the natural for me. Now I talk to people about why you don't want to do that. And I am exactly what happens if you don't listen to my experience. And most people, 98% of those people yeah. aren't here to tell you this story. Now, you're now in that 2% mentality. You're helping other people figure out that 2% mentality. But we've talked about some of your sales and some of your mindset on sales. Mm -hmm. Is that the mindset before stroke that you already had this mindset for sales or did that also change through this journey it deepened i'll put it that way it was always there but now it was really focused on talking to people in sales about that persistence and how to unlock your potential so that you can help and enable others to push through or themselves to push through um setbacks how to learn from your failures how to achieve your goals and exceed them. But it's about having that unwavered de determination, if I can talk today. Because challenges become stepping stones yeah. to success and the fulfillment if you can execute and apply them. Wow. See, this is where the career life and the personal life do merge together. And some people don't like going there. They want to keep those two worlds separate. And for me, it's always been, this is what you get. But yeah. going through what I went through, it just did go deeper. This is part of, I have to tell you some of this. It's part of what you need to hear. Absolutely. Not being obnoxious about it, but you do have a, a fire burning. But you don't want anyone else to end up where you were. Do you feel that burning like oh, that? hundred percent. Because, and if someone walks out of one of my keynotes and they're not on fire, they're not changed in some way. They're not more focused and determined than I didn't do my job because I'm not up there just telling stories. I'm not up there trying to see and be seen. I'm really trying to plant that seed that's going to grow in them to take you to a different level than you've ever been personally and professionally. Because when you separate them, you're only living half of your purpose. Yes. So, so people will leave your speaking engagements, loving sales almost as much as you love sales. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can make that promise. But what I can say is you'll walk away with a new set of lenses on life, personally and professionally. Yeah. You'll now walk away looking and finding ways to be a more fulfilled and en enriched and happy and fun life. It's funny, we get older and as adults, we leave... Yes. Fun back at that whole point of blue shirt that I talked about earlier. We don't <laughs> have to do that. I just went and played putt putt golf a couple weeks ago with the Pixar characters. Oh, I love that. <laughs> okay. I admit I'm one of the biggest kids, but when I heard Pixar and putt putt golf, and I'm like, dude, I'm there. <laughs> Where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it okay? Isn't it more liberating freeing to know you can still be that rock star, that business leader, that expert, and then you can go, you know what? Let's go play with the Legos tonight. Of course, because and especially with, with us as speakers, we're on stage and there's this persona that, that people have or this expectation because we yeah. were there that we're supposed to be different. No, I'm not. I'm the same just like you. I just have some cool experiences and some best practices yep. to share. But the best part to me is when I get off and I go sign books or whatever it may be. And people go, you're nothing like what I expected. I'm like, thank you, because I, I am literally you. And that's the point that I'm trying to get across. Right? Yes. Is that my, my daughter was asking me for the longest, dad, what do you do for fun? I'd look at her and go, what is this fun you speak of, child? <laughs> <laughs> but when I thought about it after my stroke, I really didn't have any hobbies. Go get some hobbies. I have a bocce ball court in my backyard now because there's two reasons. One, I love it and I'm old and my joints hurt. <laughs> but secondly, it is the only sport that requires that you have a cocktail in your hand at all times. There we go. <laughs> I'm in. Where do I sign? <laughs> but that's true. 
that the fun and life need to blend together. Now, you did write a book. Congratulations on that. It's also been a bestseller. Thank you. Um, and let's talk a bit about this because it's Sales Enablement 3.0, The mm -hmm. Blueprint to Sales Enablement Excellence. Now, I referenced the 3.0 because most people do the name of the book and they'll maybe do 1.0 or maybe 2.0, but you just leapfrog to the higher level right away. You went for 3.0 right out of the chute. Why'd you do that? Um, because I lived through 1.0 and 2.0, and I knew that there was more to it, in all seriousness. When I look at the, the evolution of sales, I go back to 1.0, and that was the people that were out selling the encyclopedias. They were out door to door. All right, and anyone of any age, anybody that doesn't understand it, sorry for you. Yeah, life wasn't nearly as fun. But <laughs> 2.0 was that next level where, think about Y2K. Right. When we really started to implement platforms and, and do work that we had done as human before. Three auto is that next one that we're walking into right now. It's the world of machine learning. It's the world of AI. It is how do I do things smarter, not harder? And I say this and I always have this caveat. I don't believe that AI is going to take all of our jobs. I believe that people that don't know how to leverage AI will lose their jobs. Well, and I'm coming from the same pack from public speaking, from media. Mm -hmm. It will never replace me, but I will use it. But it could replace me because they are going to voice track more and more. They are going to AI make bodies. So I have to protect my brand to make it as sharp as they can that no one wants a robot version of Trigger. They want Trigger because that's the humanness. That's mm -hmm. the authenticness. The things you're going back to earlier if I do that well enough, they're never even going to want to think about AI of trigger. Well, uh, from and that's a great approach to take, too. And, and it's simple. It, it's really AI can give you content, not context. Hold on, though, Rich. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> yet. <laughs> so and until that happens, people still buy from people. People yeah. still want to have relationships. Yes. Right. Because we know that the backbone of sales is literally relationships. And you talk about there very strongly is customers for life. That's going to oh, be yeah. success. Customers for life. for life, not a sales for today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because again, back to that whole GTM transformation piece, yeah. that includes the back end of customer success and customer support. It's much easier to hold on to a customer than it is to go and get someone else. Plus, in today's age, if you lose a customer, you don't own your brand anymore. If you keep the customer, you don't own your brand anymore. So it's very easy to have them say wonderful things on social media that are not going to hurt your brand. And how's that done? By human connecting, not connection. So talk a little bit about that because... I love collaborating. I love hearing crazy ideas of Walt Disney. Let's throw anything against the wall and discuss it and rip it apart, put it back Absolutely. together. Some people are scared to death of that because they want to have a bunch of sycophants that agree with everything. Yeah. But you're talking about getting out of that and letting the room be full of open dialogue, right? Yeah, absolutely. Let, let me go back to my mom for a second, the woman I told you I, I saw. Yeah. One of her philosophies were people always think that they're special or, or they're untouchable because they do this. And that is wrapping their arms in tightly and keeping everything in. Yes. She said you become invaluable when you open this up because one, you can give and you can receive both. And to some people, that's scary and more scary because they don't know how to do that. So what advice can you give them, coach? to help them open up and get real great question first and foremost stop being worried about being the smartest person in any given room most people don't want to give up it's not about control and power it's the fact that somebody's going to be smarter than me my uncle used to say you are if you know one thing more than everybody else in the room you're the subject matter expert <laughs> until somebody comes in and does two things then you're not the subject matter expert anymore and so what that does is it drives you. The other piece is I am a perpetual learner. I will learn from everyone that is, you know, a kid at Burger King to the janitor up to a, a billionaire executive. If you can teach me something, teach me something. 
but I'm also going to give you back something. So you've got to take and give both. Most people just want to give. And I mean give advice or, or give my best practices. No, 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 no. I give to give, and I don't give thinking that things are going to come back. If they do, that's wonderful. But most of the time, they, they either don't or they can't, and I'm okay with that. I'm curious. In the beginning, I talked about your persistence, to succeed through persistence. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got a couple sore spots from banging on the wall too much and being persistent and stubborn. What's the difference between stubbornness and being persistent while being open like that? Because you can be persistent, but sometimes we're just not getting it, right? Yeah. I think the word is maturation. <laughs> right? Okay. And growth and maybe even becoming seasoned with a little gray, right? The other piece is learn from other people's mistakes so you don't have to go and do them. Don't step in the same hole I did if you watch me break my ankle. Walk around the hole. <laughs> Be smart enough not to go and stick your foot in that same hole. And most people are like, well, I can do it. And this is and here's the, the biggest piece. Help me kill this, would you please? Everyone listening. This is the way we've always done it. Because yeah. the way we've done it before either A, doesn't exist or no longer works today. Mm -hmm. So be that next person that says, there's a better mousetrap. There's a better way to do this. And you know what? Many hands make for light work. That's why I love the Disney mindset. Because mm -hmm. they were building things way ahead of their time and they knew it. And their engineers would come and say, we can't do this. We can't do this. And Disney would tell his Imagineer guys, go dream up something new. I don't care how you do it. Just go find a way to do it. And then tell me when it works. That's all I need to know. The freedom, the liberty, the creativity, the conversations they must have had just blows your mind to think that's what we get to enjoy now. Why can't we do that in business? Why can't we do that in other areas of life? Um, I think a lot of companies are afraid to step outside of the box. First of all, they put themselves in a box. Let's start there. And secondly, they're afraid to step outside of that box because it could be career limiting. Yeah, but it could also be expansive and a game changer for the whole world. It really could. Yeah. I mean, I had a phrase years ago. There is no box. There, there, there just love isn't. Love Why that. even think that way? If there's no box, I can go any direction, anywhere, with anyone to make it happen. Yeah, but are, are we taught that as we're coming up in school, in That's university, right. in corporate? Mm -hmm. Only entrepreneurs think, I'm going to learn how to and how not to. What if we all took on that entrepreneurial spirit? I'm going to learn how to. I'm going to learn how not to. But either way, I'm going to learn. I'm going to iterate. I'm going to then try it again. What's the old adage? If you fall off the horse 10 times, you better get up 11. <laughs> which, which you have demonstrated with your resilience and the things you. you've gone through. And I think that's what people really need to hear. We, we've gone through pandemic. We've gone through recession if. We don't know yep. what we're in right now. I, I don't know what to call what we're in right pivoting. now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people are pivoting all the time. It's never any reinvention right now. You have to get back up and have to get back up and you have to get back up, don't you? Absolutely. And I love the word you use, pivot, because pivot does not mean anything other than I'm stepping in a different direction. I played basketball. When I think pivot, I think I went left. It didn't work. I'm pivoting back and I'm going right now. That's all it comes down to. It means I'm going to step in a different direction than where I've walked. Well, let me throw out another term here. Retreat. People hmm. hear that and they think defeat. Retreat is a strategic way to back up, regroup, and come back out strong and refreshed. It's not a negative. It's actually a very strong strategy. So as we've pivoted, as we've reset mm -hmm. ourselves, many people have struggled with the idea of, I've had a retreat, back up a little bit to try to come back out again. <laughs> it's not a defeat, is it? When you retreat, no. it's strategic. First of all, I look at retreat differently uh, as opposed to stepping back. I look at it from the executive offsite mindset. 
Retreat says that we're getting together, we're regrouping so that we can collaborate better moving forward. It has nothing to do with stepping back. That's true. It's all about mindset, right? <laughs> That's why you're the author and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, well, we need to share with everybody how they can learn more about you. This is a QR code. Roderick's got tons of great stuff to learn about. This is his link tree. You can find everything there is to know about him. So what are they going to find out about you? I think, first of all, they're going to find out that I'm human and, and, and I'm authentic and I write. I, I talk the same way that I live every day. The other thing is that thing he said about being a people person, he really meant that. Anyone that, that goes and listens to my stuff, reads my stuff, buys the book, I, I implore you, please reach out and, and connect with me because I love to get your input and your thoughts and your feedback on how I can even do it better than what I'm doing right now. And wow. teach me something, would you? Teach me something new. You know, there's there's a show years ago that they always used to come down to the end of the show and here's what we learned today. Segment was always there. <laughs> yeah. I think we need to bring that back, don't we? I think I like we need that. to summarize yeah. the day with friends, family, coworkers of, you know what? Let's go around the room. What'd you learn? Today? You know, I think that's something to bring back. Uh, again, because one, anytime we can get more engagement, I'm all for it. Because I truly believe social media has made all of us less social. <laughs> I really do. Um, and what did I learn today? I learned that there's a new way, even today out of this conversation, just that conversation about retreat really grabs me. Because to your point, they think most people think about stepping back. I think about retreat is regrouping, collaborating, and moving forward now. I'm going to take that with me. Thank you for that, Rich. I appreciate it. Of me thinking differently, me learning something new, and something else more importantly that I can share with others. I'm going to take this on the stage with me going forward. This has forever changed me. And thank you for that. Well, again, this is why I love doing this show. And that's why I tell people it's unscripted. There's a, there's a basic shell and everything else is where the story goes. And I love falling into the story. I love going to where we naturally fall into. And people have said, this is authentic. It's fun. They like seeing the realness of what goes on here. And this is one of the funnest things I get to do every week. It's not a job. <laughs> I think it it is. You've got a really cool job. With, with, with amazing people, you know, with you. I do want to go back as we before we go there. Can I can I say one more thing that yeah, I learned please. today? Yeah, you're a sales guy. <laughs> oh yes, you are. And you know what you sell? You're selling that experience like very few people that. And I do a lot of podcasts. And I'm not here to stroke you and make you feel good. It's literally from my heart. This is one of the best and most fun experiences that I've had in a long time. Because mm -hmm. let's go back to what I said. Selling was. Stop selling and start helping. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing here. Stop calling yourself a sales guy. Just change your mindset of what sales means. That's beautiful. Thank you very much, Roderick. I do want to ask you this because you touched on it and we are now all working remotely from home. The vast majority mm -hmm. of this has shifted from the big office, the teams, but we're working here on Zoom or Teams or whatever platform we're on. Absolutely. That authentic nature and the personal stories that you mentioned. What's the best tipping of people that are really struggling with that? Because this is still, I train media skills. I've been doing this for 30 years plus. Most people have not. Mm -hmm. So what can you do to help someone to say, I've got this. I'm doing better because this now is the new way to sell. It's quite simple. Every time I go on to talk with a prospect or have a new conversation, my wife always pops her head in and she says the same thing. And it's real simple. And I never thought about it until just now. She says, go make a new friend. Don't try to impress them. Go meet your next blue shirt. It's as simple as that. Go if make a new friend. I'm not saying you have to go happy hour and do cocktails, but the mindset is, I'm trying to meet a new friend. I'm not trying to impress them, right? I'm trying to learn more about them. Take the old adage of why do we network? 
because I want to show you that I actually want to hear more about you and your story than me telling you yours. My, excuse me, telling you mine. Keep that mindset of make a new friend. I used to hate networking because I never knew what to say. I know it's hard to tell, but I, I didn't because I was like, uh, hi, I sell stuff. Will you buy it? <laughs> right. And now it's tell me about you. I, I love the shoes. Where'd you get those? Or I saw you over here talking to so-and-so. I talked to him too. Are they not just one of the coolest people ever? Have that conversation. Don't try to impress. Roderick Jefferson, great time today. This has been fantastic, and that's a great way to wrap this up. Just go make a friend. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm truly honored. Roderick, thanks for being with us here today on Rock the Stage. That's why we do this show every Sunday night. We bring amazing interviews, discussions like this. And coming into it, we don't know where we're really going to go, but we go great, amazing places like this. And I hope you got something out of it. I did. There are major takeaways here, and you want, again, hit that QR code. You want to go check out Roderick. He is on LinkedIn. Very easy to find him there. You've got to connect with Roderick Jefferson. Remember the name, transformational leader, keynote speaker, and best-selling author. Hey, that's going to do it for tonight's edition of Rock the Stage Show. Hope you've made a friend here tonight. I love that. That's going to do it for tonight. I'm the Trigger Rich Bond Trigger. We look forward to seeing you back here once again for another edition of Rock the Stage Show.